What's up guys, Jeremy with Everything iDevice, and welcome to the Moga Ace Power Controller for the iPhone 5, 5S, 5C, and iPod Touch 5th Generation. Uh, like I said, this is pretty much a controller, and I've been waiting a while for something like this to come out that does support uh, iOS. Now, uh, thanks to iOS 7, the release of, the release of iOS 7, they, Apple has opened up doors for third-party controllers to be developed and created for um, iOS devices, basically. So this is the first one we got, and it, like I said, it's the Moga Ace Power. Uh, it's a little bit pricey. This sucker comes in at $100, um, but there's quite a bit to it, and I think it's probably worth, you know, the money if you're really into mobile gaming. So uh, first off, let's take a look at the couple of things that do come in the box. First off, you do get the USB to micro USB. That is to charge the built-in uh, battery of the controller. It does have an 1800 milliamp battery that also can be used to charge your device as well. Um, you also do get these a uh, couple of orange plastic pieces. These are basically spacers that you put inside the controller uh, that will allow the iPod Touch 5th generation to work with it since the, the iPod is so much more thin than the iPhones. So you do have a couple of spacers. And uh, there is an instruction booklet, and that's about it. That's all that comes in the box. So let's talk about the controller itself. Um, to put your device in, this is not a Bluetooth controller. This is actually... It actually plugs right into your, your device. So you basically just open it up. Oh, I have it locked. There's a lock button on the back if you don't want this opening up in your backpack or anything. Uh, so you basically just open it up and if you look, the left hand side over here is spring loaded. As you can see, it, it opens up a bit and that'll allow you to slide your device inside. So let's go ahead and put the lightning connector in and then basically just kind of slide it up and it just goes in really quite easily. It'll probably take you a second to get used to it because it's kind of goofy feeling. Um, so let's talk about the button layout, the buttons, the overall quality of the controller, and if it's really worth the $100. So first off, you do have your analog sticks here. Uh, it's kind of similar to the Xbox 360 as they're kind of offset. Um, they're not both at the bottom or both at the top or anything. One's up higher, one's down lower, as you can see. The analogs are a lot like the Nintendo 3DS as they're pretty much just flat. They just kind of sit in this nice little plasticky kind of, I don't know, hole here and it just you know it they feel pretty good they're not you know overly stiff they're not overly soft they do have you know a good amount of resistance you, you're unable to click them obviously but uh, they do feel pretty good uh, the d-pad I think they did really good on the d-pad as well a lot of controllers just tr have trouble with the d-pads but I do like you know the way this one feels the tactile feedback of the buttons feels good also since it is basically one piece you can kind of uh, you know, just keep your thumb on it. For uh, Lord of the Rings, or Lego Lord of the Rings, for some reason you're forced to use the D-pad to walk around and move. Um, I'm sure there'll be an update for that to support the analog, but it's kind of a pain, but since the uh, D-pad is one piece, it does make it a lot easier to just kind of slide your thumb around it to move around, which is pretty nice. Um, you do have a designated lock button right here. As you can see, if I press it, it will wake up my device, and it will put it back to sleep. You do have a pause button for in... For within the games, you can just click the pause button and we'll pause the game. Uh, moving down here, you have your little button here. This will allow the controller to charge your device if you'd like. So if we switch that on, as you can see, it starts charging my iPhone. And if you switch it off, it'll stop. You also do have a battery indicator light right there. As you can see, the battery is full right now. Uh, like I said, this does have an 1800 milliamp battery. Uh, you can also, like I said, use it to charge your iPhone. Uh, do keep in mind if you're using it to charge your iOS device while you use it, it's going to take away from the battery life of the physical controller itself, which is said to have about 16 hours on a full charge. So it does have quite a bit of battery life, but if you were to use the controller to fully charge your device from 0% up to 100% uh, one time, you'd probably have about 3 hours left of uh, you know battery for the physical controller. So do keep that in mind. Um, charging your device will take away from you know how long the battery will last with the controller itself uh, like I said it does charge using micro USB that port is at the top you also do have the headphone jack port at the bottom right there nice that they did that I really like it um, another thing that would probably be you know most would forget to mention which I think is uh, pretty cool with this you know controller is the uh, speaker and the microphone are redirected to be front-facing so I really, really do notice it when I'm playing my games. If you turn the volume way up, it just blasts in, into your face instead of, you know, going out the side, possibly being blocked with your fingers. Um, so that's something you you will pretty much notice. Now, the X, Y, A, B buttons, I think, feel perfectly fine. They could have probably made them a little bit more spread apart. They're kind of close together, but uh, it really doesn't 
affect anything. It doesn't bug me at all. I have no issues pressing any of the buttons. And then obviously your other analog here, you do have the right and left bumpers there and the right and left triggers here. Now the triggers are probably my least favorite buttons of the entire controller because there's no click. They're just fully spring loaded and as you compress them completely they just don't click. They just get really really tight and I don't know they just they won't click. Just kind of weird. They do work perfectly fine. They feel good on your fingertips. You know they're positioned really nicely. The bumpers feel you know pretty good themselves as well. Uh, overall, you know, it's not bad. Also, like I said on the back, you do have this uh, lock button. So when you have it pushed together, maybe like in your backpack or something, you can lock it so it doesn't open up and get broken or anything like that. Now, another thing I'm going to mention here really quickly before I get into game the gameplay, and sorry for this being a longer review, is uh, for all of the black area of the controller besides the orange, it's mostly kind of like a matte finish. As you can see, it's not really glossy. But on the front here, and if you look over on the left-hand side here, I've only used this for, you know, like a full day, and it wasn't like I was throwing it around or putting it in my backpack with other stuff or in my pocket with coins or anything, but it is accumulating scratches already, as you can see, so uh, I got a feeling that this might be a bit of a scratch magnet, so that's kind of a downside, but, you know, what the hell, it's a controller, have fun with it. So, let's get into some of the gameplay now. Um, obviously, you gotta wait for a lot of your favorite games to come out and be supported, uh, here's just a couple. They do have, you know, a pretty good lineup of games that are supported with this controller. And, um, one of my favorites is Oceanhorn. I'm so glad that that game is supported. It's absolutely awesome. I did the, you know, a gameplay of Oceanhorn here on the channel. And it's basically like Zelda for iOS. And I absolutely love the controller support. It's just so nice. So, you, you basically just use your analog. You got, uh, A and X are your action buttons. They both do the same thing. And then your B and Y are your your black buttons for your shield. Um, I'm, I've not got gotten far enough in this game to actually get the bone arrow, so I'm not sure exactly uh, you know how that's going to work yet, but I believe you access it here on the side, just like so. And that would be with your, your inventory as well, like potions and stuff like that. You can access it right on the side. The pause button works perfectly fine, as you can see. Um, you don't use the right analog as you don't really look around. It's always in you know a fixed orientation for which way you look. Uh, the, you can use the D-pad as well to move around, but why use that when you can use an analog? And, yeah, that's pretty much this how this game works. It, it really makes you feel like like you're playing, you know, a, a portable, you know, gaming device, like a PSP or even like a Nintendo 3DS or something like that, you know? It really gives gaming on your device a completely different feel, and I absolutely love it. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's exit out of Oceanhorn. Like I said... Um, Lego uh, Lord of the Rings works. Oh, I just died. Whoops. But unfortunately with this, you do have to use the D-pad as the analog doesn't work for moving. So that kind of sucks. And let's move out of my way, dude. Damn. Let's try and avoid dying here. So you do have your, you know, your action button. Uh, no looking around on this as well. Ouch. You got your jump button, you got your block, and then you got your attack, and then I forget what, uh, oh yeah, you hold to do special move. Pretty straightforward. Still very, very fun to play. Unfortunately, like I said, it does use the D-pad, so that's kind of a downside as it gets a little annoying, but still, not too bad. Uh, Bastion is supported. Dead Trigger 2. This is seriously fun. Uh, let's go back. And here we go. I can't wait to see more first-person shooters support uh, this controller because I think this is really fun. This is I don't you can you can game so much better with this controller playing a first-person shooter like this than you can with you know the touchscreen controllers. This is this is where a controller like this really shines having the dual analogs. I think this is just extremely fun. You can switch your weapons with the X. Got all your action buttons. All buttons work great. But like I said, this is all about the shooting. Um, unfortunately, Dead Trigger, Dead Trigger 2 does do um, automatic shooting. So basically, once your, you know, your reticule is on the enemy, it auto starts shooting for you. But this would be cool to see with uh, Modern Combat, as you'd have your aim down scope with left trigger and then fire with your right trigger. A lot, you know, very similar to Call of Duty. 
I think that would be just absolutely epic to do with your iPhone. Now this is a little bit different controls. I kind of wanted to show here in this video quick once we get loaded up. This takes advantage of the bumpers and the D-pad. And I'll show you here in a second when we can get loaded up. Let's go ahead and click play. Now this, I think, yeah. Uh, to do some of this, you do have to touch the screen, which... No, 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 no. Um, and let's do the one I haven't done. And I don't want to play against anybody. So you got your gas, which is the right bumper, your brake, which is the left bumper, and then your leaning controls, which is the D-pad. Uh, you also do have your bunny hop, which is A, and that's basically it. So let's go ahead and let's go run through a track. This is very, very fun as well. It feels really nice that it, you, you use the uh, the bumpers, but, you know, I think the triggers might be a little bit more comfortable, so hopefully we'll see that in an update. Like I said, this controller literally just came out, and a lot of these games basically coded them without having a physical controller to use. They used, uh, you know, Apple's kind of just their scheme of what they, you know, figured it would be like. So this, uh, a lot of these games really aren't updated yet to support this controller, so... They will get better as time goes and more games come out that do support it and you know in future updates these games will get much much better in my opinion so there we go we're done with the course so yeah that was trial extreme and that's gonna be pretty much it for this video guys i just want to show you you know uh a short gameplays of a couple of the games how the controllers kind of work with them again this is the moga ace power it does support the iphone 5 5s 5c ipod touch fifth generation um, I will leave a link down in the description in case you guys, you know, want to buy one of these for yourselves. It is, you know, Christmas season. This might make a cool gift to somebody and or yourself. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, like I said, it's 100 bucks. You know, it's kind of up to you. In my opinion, it really does make, you know, gaming for certain games just way better. It just absolutely blows the, the touchscreen controllers out of the water having these physical buttons. And I really do think that, you know, this device is probably worth the $100 price tag, at least for me just because I love gaming on my device so much. So yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy this quick review of the Moga Ace Power. If you did, definitely throw me that thumbs up. That'll help me out tremendously. Also, if you guys want to see more, uh, I guess, gaming videos that support this, like, I don't know, like the top 10 games for the controller or something like that, uh, definitely let me know down in the comments. Also, if you guys want to see more reviews like this, be sure to click that subscribe button. This has been Jeremy with Everything iDevice, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.